Thought I'd do a short video on an Arduino controlled uh, 40 meter direct conversion uh, receiver that I've been uh, building and having a bit of fun with. Um, I took a lot of inspiration from uh, as another YouTuber, Charlie Morris, who he has a great homebrew channel, builds lots of uh, fascinating stuff. Um, so I took inspiration from, from Charlie's uh, 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 channel. Uh, I'll post a link below. He also has a website where he posts all of his, his schematics and uh, and the code for the Arduino that he uh, that, that, that he has there. Actually, Charlie uses a Teensy, uh, which is uh, kind of a quite a powerful uh, um, microcontroller. Um, the radio itself is a, an IQ style design, and and by that I mean basically from the uh, local oscillator. You drive into the into the mixer two signals, uh, one in phase and one 90 degrees out of phase, um, and then it gets mixed with the uh, with the RF coming in, um, and the result of which is you get an, an I signal, in phase signal, Q, uh, and a, a quadrature signal, and they're at uh, this is a direct conversion receiver, so they're at, actually at the uh, the baseband, the audio frequency. Um, so signals first pass in, uh, come in through the through band pass filter, and I'll just uh, move to the uh, the portion of the circuit that is the band pass filter. You can see it here, two transformers, thirty seven six toroids, uh, with a six to thirty one winding, and then obviously uh, we have some capacitors here, and then uh, the the band pass filter itself is is tuned by uh, by adjusting these uh, these trimmers here. So the signal passes in through the uh, through the band pass filter, and then moves on to uh, the Taylor detector. Now Taylor detector uh, was invented by uh, Dan Taylor, uh, and there's a link to below to a, a great article by the man himself, um, uh, where he describes at great length uh, his construction of uh, his direct conversion receiver. It's a fantastic article. I mean, I can't, I can't do his design justice, so I recommend you read that, uh, read that article itself. So continuing through the block diagram, you get the two LO uh, uh, signals coming in, one at zero degrees, one at 90 degrees, and then the result of this, uh, there is an in-phase signal and a quadrature signal at the audio baseband. That gets sent into uh, a pre-amplifier, um, and uh, just moving to the, uh, the portion of the circuit that has that, uh, you can see that the, uh, the signal comes in here, and this is, the, uh, this is an op amp which uh, uh, amplifies the, both the I and the Q signals. And then um, it moves through to uh, another critical part of, uh, of, the, uh, uh, of this style of radio is a phase shifter. What you have to do is you have to phase shift the Q signal uh, back 90 degrees, uh, the result of which when, when you sum them together it gets rid of your, uh, uh, gets rid of the unwanted sideband, whether that's upper or lower sideband. Now the phase shifter itself, uh, let me just pan over here, um, I actually got that from uh, experimental methods in RF uh, design, um, and it's this one on the right hand side here, so it's a two stage phase shifter. Now, one of the things about these uh, phase shifters is uh, they require very tight tolerances on the on the resistors and capacitors. So all these resistors in here are uh, one percent resistors. Uh, I wasn't able to find any one percent capacitors, um, so I had to sort through my five percent capacitors, picking out the the, the best of the, uh, the the best of the bunch. So these uh, these one percent uh, resistors they're easy to get. Uh, Digikey, plenty of places sell them. Uh, I couldn't find any uh, any any low to tolerance, uh, high tolerance, I guess, uh, capacitors. Um, so that's the phase uh, shift um, circuit. Now, one thing I forgot to me to mention: the actual Taylor detector itself um, uses uh, an FST thirty two fifty three four to one multiplexer demultiplexer, and that's uh, that's it right here. Um, and uh, you know a lot of the designs out there, um, actually in uh, Dan's um, Dan Taylor's uh, uh, circuit, he has the kind of Texas Instruments equivalent of this. But this is in this uh, chips in wide use in a lot of IQ radios. Uh, the ones that, uh, for instance, QRP Lab sell use the same uh, use the same chip. Um, so what else? Um, so the uh, the uh, 
zero and 90 degree signals from the local oscillator. Um, now that's produced by, uh, actually this is a, a QRP Labs, uh, uh, QR, a QRP Labs kit here. This is this uh, SI5351 synthesizer. Um, so it's just some circuitry in here uh, that uh, this is, a, for instance, a 3.3 um, a volt uh, uh, power supply. Uh, there's some FETs to do uh, level control between 3.3 volt and 5 volt. Um, and this is actually driven, uh, driven by um, just panning down a bit by, by the Arduino itself. So uh, I'll describe that in a little more detail uh, a, a little lower down. There's a whole library out there uh, to, you know, to drive this particular chip. So just going uh, through the, uh, the, the phase shifting uh, circuit in a, little, in a little more detail. So uh, after the um, after the uh, uh, the I and the Q um, signals are passed to the phase shifter, what you get out of the other side is Q is the Q um, portion of the signal is shifted ninety degrees. The uh, I portion is left alone, and then they're summed together. Once they're summed together. Um, Basically, one of the sidebands is, is removed, either the upper or lower sideband. And you can simply uh, choose which uh, sideband is removed simply by swapping the, uh, the leads of the I and the Q on the input to the, uh, uh, to the preamp there. So very easy. I, I don't have, I should have a switch that, that does that, but I, I just solder and desolder as I, as I change bands, which is, is, a bit, uh, is a bit inefficient. So, so just moving on down to the uh, to the to the heart of this, uh, and that's um, uh, an Atmega three twenty eight P microcontroller, and that's used to control the synthesizer chip, um, and the chip itself is configured through I I two C uh, connections from the from the Arduino. Uh, there's an Arduino library that allows you to drive all the functions of this of this chip. And I'll include a, a link to that below. Um, most importantly, uh, one of the features of this chip is it can actually output signals in quadrature, uh, which is key to the whole thing. Um, there are some other ways of generating uh, uh, quadrature signals um, uh, using uh, 74HC74s, uh, I think, to, to, to uh, the, the flip-flop chips so to achieve the same but you don't need all that circuitry in this one because you actually get a zero and 90 degrees signal uh, directly out of the out of the synthesizer um, so what else um, just some simple circuitry on the on the, the remainder of the controller board there's an encoder here that's used to uh, to change the frequency and the frequency itself is displayed on the uh, on an LCD here so that's about all there is to the radio. Um, obviously, I can't uh, claim to uh, have created this in any way. I've just picked up bits and pieces, uh, but it was a bit of fun. Um, it was a bit of fun putting it together. Uh, one of the interesting things is uh, originally for the uh, uh, for the mixer, I had uh, this is uh, this is part of the inspiration I got of Charlie. He had a pair of any six o twos here, and he would drive the. The, uh, the the zero uh, signal into one and the ninety degree signal to the other. I I I got that working, but it, it wasn't very sensitive. So uh, so I obviously I did something wrong there. I can't, I can't I can't quite figure out what was wrong, but there was not a lot of sensitivity. Um, this has uh, you know putting the uh, the um, uh, the FST thirty two fifty three chip in there. Uh, that was, uh, oh, the circuit is actually simpler uh, and it seems to give a better result. Um, that's about all I've got uh, on the, the walkthrough of the, of the circuit. Um, what I'll do next is uh, get this on air and, uh, and, and show you the, uh, the results uh, uh, on the 40 meter band. So uh, that's coming up next. I'll see you then. Are there others for the 7290 traffic net, WA5VAS? Ascending uh, net control K-A-5-A-Z-K, we're holding traffic for Allen N5 MSE, Texas traffic for Amarillo, Austin, Rich. Well, it's a net going on uh, 40 meters at uh, 7.290 megahertz. Um, the band is, uh, it's the middle of the day here, about two o'clock in the afternoon. So the band is, uh, is as you imagine, very quiet. Uh, but I was able to pick up that net that's going on. 
Uh, there's not much else going on, unfortunately. Um, one of the things I can show you is the, is the sideband suppression, which is okay. Uh, the stronger the signal, the, 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 the less effective it seems to be. But I'll just turn up the volume again and then uh, and tune down and you should be able to see the... Uh... Three times yesterday, I heard you check into the Gulf Coast hurricane net. <laughs> so you were everywhere. You have a wonderful afternoon. So, so that's the sideband suppression. You can still hear the signal, uh, but it is suppressed. Uh, it is suppressed quite a bit. Um, and I don't really have uh, that great of filtering on on here. I do have a an op amp configured in a uh, in a filter. Uh, but it's only a single stage, uh, it's, it's actually a double pole, but it's just a single stage filter. So let me tune back up again. Um, that net's uh, gone quiet or I'm not able to receive. Oh, there we go. Are you still there, KC There we go. All right, uh, Let's uh, go down to the CW portion of the band and uh, see if there's any activity down there. I mean, I usually like to uh, usually like to uh, get to FT8, which is uh, 7074-ish. Um, I've got to have some uh, some button bounce on <laughs> code in here. I, uh, it doesn't always take it when I. Uh, Now you can just hear it. Uh, very quiet there. Not much uh, FT8 action at all. Anyway, let's uh, let's go down a little bit further and uh, see if we can pick up any CW. No. Oh, there's something. Hear it. There was plenty of action earlier today, but uh, it looks like uh, the band's completely dried up at this point. Anyway, well, let's head back to that uh, that net up there. And, uh, Uh, Fall Region 5 is 15.30. Alright, so it's still at 3.30. Uh, anyway, uh, that's, that probably, uh, that, that's probably uh, all I got for now. Uh, like I said, a lot of fun building this uh, little radio. Uh, there's plenty of other stuff I can do. Uh, maybe put it in a case uh, so it doesn't look like so much of a Frankenstein monster. Um, but uh, I had a, lot of, had a lot of fun building it. Um, not sure what's uh, what's next. Um, uh, I, I definitely, uh, you know, I definitely like to uh, um, be able to do multiple bands on this. And you know, one of the things I had done on the uh, uh, on the previous version of this is I actually had these were little plug-in modules. So I might uh, I might go back to doing that as well. Um, the phase shifter I'm kind of very happy with. Um, the, uh, the original one I built wasn't using 1% resistors and it was not very effective at all. Um, this uh, does do about, you're supposed to get in, in uh, according to the experimental methods and RF design, you're supposed to get up upwards of uh, 50, uh, 50 dB of sideband, of the unwanted sideband suppression. I wasn't really getting anywhere near that, more likely 25 dBs of, uh, of suppression on the unwanted sideband, but uh, uh, but it's certainly effective enough. Anyway, I'll wrap it up at this point and catch you later.